morning and welcome back. Thank you for joining me once again. Today's sequence is one that you might find great benefit from recently. And this is a sequence that's going to help you if you're battling or dealing with sciatica. For those of you not familiar with the feelings of sciatica, it starts with a little bit of pain in the lower part of your back, maybe goes into your glutes a little bit. Some severe cases will start to travel their way down the leg, um, maybe into the back of your calf. Some extreme cases will even travel up the one, one side of your back all the way up to the top of your head. Um, so this is when the sciatic nerve becomes inflamed. Um, this, the poses that I'm going to give you are not actual cures for sciatica, but they help to keep some of those symptoms. Um, they, they, they tone them down a little bit and help them to feel a little bit more manageable day to day. So um, even if you're not dealing with sciatica, but you find yourself in a seated position, these are still great poses to do to help keep some of those symptoms away and help your muscles stay nice and stretched and elongated so that you don't end up dealing with sciatica because it can be very, very painful. So we're gonna start in a very comfortable position and that's child's pose. So come to the back of your mat, come into tabletop pose. I'm gonna get you into child's pose in a very comfortable way. Bring your knees to the outside of the mat. So you've got a little bit of a V that you formed with your shins. Bring your big toes together at the back of the mat and then shift your weight all the way back and sink in between your thighs and extend your arms out in front of you. So right away, you might be able to feel this in the lower part of your back. When you extend those arms all the way out, it's a great stretch for your entire back. I can especially feel this in the lower part of my back. I have dealt with sciatica in my life and I know when those symptoms start to come on, this is a great posture to do to stretch out your entire back. Now, if child's pose is not wonderful for you because of your knees or you just can't get into this position, you can come into puppy pose. Puppy pose is where your hips are a little bit higher. It's not tabletop pose, but your hips are higher than the rest of your body and you're resting on your forearms. You won't find the great benefit in sciatic relief from puppy pose as you do from child's pose, but in this case, it's a great alternative for you. So you can let yourself relax in child's pose for a little bit. Feel this nice stretch into your spine. Your head is below your heart in this pose, so another benefit that you're going to get from it is you've got a fresh flow of blood coming to your face. So you've got a nice, you'll, you'll come up from this pose with a beautiful color in your face. It's free Botox. You don't have to pay for this one. Now try to walk your hands forward. If you're in child's pose, try to walk those hands forward to the top of the mat. This is going to stretch out the upper part of your back into your shoulder blades. Continuing to breathe, nice deep inhales, nice full exhales. Let your body just rest and sink and just be very heavy in the mat in this child's pose. Let your arms relax now. Keep them stretched out in front of you. Take a deep inhale. Now bring your arms and rest your forearms next to your head so that your elbows are touching your knees and just let yourself relax and come out of that stretch a little bit. Before we move any further, we wanna take away from that stretch. Just let your body relax. Feel your, your spine just kind of sink down. Feel your head very heavy in the mat. Your knees are heavy in the mat. Notice your toes on the mat. Take a deep inhale. As you exhale, press yourself up coming into tabletop. Now make some adjustments. Bring those knees in. Make sure your knees are under your hips. Make sure your hands are under your shoulders. This is going to help support your entire body. If for any reason this hurts your knees, you can put a towel underneath your knees to give it a little bit of extra support. Just make sure it's not too high. You don't want to bring your knees up too much. You want to try to keep your body in a little bit more alignment. Now from here we're going to go into cat-cow pose. This is really going to stretch out your spine. So we're going to start off with cow. To come into cow, drop your belly down toward the mat, lift your tailbone up, and lift your head up to look up towards the sky a little bit. You can't look fully up. Your, your back doesn't move that way. And now exhale. Let's curl that back up, curl your tailbone under, look back towards your thighs as we come into cat pose. In exhale, let's lift that tailbone up, looking up to the sky, coming into cow pose. Exhale, let's curl that tailbone under, looking back, coming into cat pose. Inhale, nice stretch coming into cow. So when we move through this, we want to move very slowly. Continue to move along with me as I do this. Exhaling as you come into cat, as you tuck that tailbone up, 
and under. And then inhale as you come into cow pose. Tailbone goes up, looking up to the sky. Now the next time we come into cat pose, let's curl that tailbone under. Really feel this nice stretch. This is one that really, really gets into your sciatic nerve. Let's come into cow pose one more time, lifting that tailbone up, really feeling this nice stretch along the upper part of your back. One last time as we come into cat, tuck that tailbone under, look back towards your knees, and then inhale. Let's come back to a flat back, and then oh, it's might, this might seem really silly, but let's just get some hip motion. Just start to rock your body in circles. This is just gonna get some fluidity, get that blood flowing through your back, get some motion in your hips, and now let's move in the opposite direction. We wanna keep this nice and balanced. This also works on your core. So to kind of combat sciatica, we wanna have a strong core and we want to have a strong back as well. So I'm gonna have a few core poses in here. Not as many, we wanna focus on the stretch, but adding in core strength and stability is not a bad idea as, as you deal with any symptoms of sciatica. Okay, let's come back to tabletop. Tuck your toes under. We're gonna go into downward facing dog. Lift your hips up to the sky, press your chest towards your thighs, reposition those feet. They should be about three inches apart. They should be in line with your hips. Your toes should be facing forward and then try to drive those heels down into the ground. This is gonna stretch out the muscles behind your legs. So if you're dealing with serious sciatica, you might feel this behind your legs. This is a nice, gentle stretch for them. Now let's do what I call walking the dog, keeping your toes on the mat. Raise one heel and drop the other heel into the ground, and then do the same on the opposite side. This, it's either walking the dog or bicycling your feet. Continuing to breathe as you do this, moving at a pace that feels comfortable for you. If it feels really good to get a nice deep stretch, you can hold that foot in that position for a little bit longer, and then move to the opposite one or you can continue with a nice fluid motion, whatever feels good for you. So the other benefit of staying in downward facing dog for a little bit is it's wonderful for, your, wonderful for your shoulders. It's a great way to really strengthen those shoulders. Continuing to breathe, nice deep inhale. Okay, let's come back to a static downward dog. Try to drive those heels into the ground. That's going to elongate those muscles behind your legs. Okay, so we're gonna go into a little bit of an advanced pose right now. This one is called Pigeon Pose. This is an amazing stretch for your sciatic nerve. So just follow along with me. I'm gonna move very slowly. We're gonna start with our right knee. Draw your right knee as you exhale up and in towards your chin. Kind of get a runner stance. Exhale, extend it back and up as we come into three-legged downward dog, either up or just straight back. And now with another exhalation, drive your knee forward up in between your hands. Then you're gonna rotate that leg at the hip slightly and you're going to rest the outside of your leg on the mat. You can't see it as well here, but you're trying to get your shin almost parallel to the mat, but don't force it. Only go as far as you can. You don't wanna rest on top of your knee. This isn't gonna stretch out your sciatic nerve. You wanna to rotate to the outside. There we go, now I've got a little bit better. You wanna to rotate to the outside so that you're resting on the outside of your leg. Now with your back foot, you can keep that toe flat on the mat, or if it hurts your knees, you can tuck that under. That's gonna help support your knee. Let's sit up nice and tall. This is pigeon pose, this is proud pigeon. Sitting up nice and tall, shoulders back and down, feeling this nice stretch along your spine and into your glutes. Now if it feels comfortable, start to walk yourself forward, folding over into pigeon pose. You can rest on your forearms, or if you've got room, you can extend those arms all the way out and rest your head on the mat. I'm gonna come up a little bit so I can talk a little bit more easily, but stay in the variation that feels comfortable for you. So you see, I have my toes tucked under. This is helping to protect my knee. And I can really feel this. You should be able to feel this along the outside of your leg, into your glutes, into that sciatic nerve, maybe into the lower part of your back. Another great benefit of this is it's a great hip opener. We wanna also focus on our hips when we're dealing with sciatica, because the, a ni nice open hips and nice flexible hips are gonna help you to move a little bit more easily, and you should be able to sit a little bit more easily too. Continuing to breathe, nice deep inhale. If you are folded over into pigeon, I almost don't wanna get out of this because it feels so good. If you are folded over into pigeon, walk yourself back up, coming back up into proud pigeon. 
Okay, so when we get out of this, we will have been sitting in this for a little while. We need to get a little bit of motion into your hips. So press your hands into the mat, start to lift yourself up with your toes, with the outside of your right leg, and then let's get some motion in the side of our leg. So let's start rotating that leg in nice big circles. Let's place your right foot back down onto the mat. Let's walk the dog a little bit. That's gonna stretch out the muscles behind your legs a little bit more. Let's come back into that three-legged downward dog. Exhale as you draw that knee up and in towards your chin. Extend that leg up or back, whatever feels good for you. And then let's bend your knee, start to drive it forward, driving that knee up and in between your hands. Now, as you can see on this side, I'm resting on the outside of my, my left leg. I'm sitting up nice and tall. Shoulders back and down, deep inhale, and then exhale. Folding forward to wherever feels good. Now, my hips are very tight on this side, so I don't have a lot of flexibility. If you are the same way, that's fine. If you need to come up a little bit taller and just sink a little bit higher into this pose, that's perfectly fine. Whatever feels good for you, letting yourself relax. Once again, tucking your toes under if you need to protect your knee. I'm on a really solid surface. I'm on, I'm on brick, so I need to protect my knee because it can't sit very comfortably on this. You can also place a very thin towel underneath your knee, but you don't want it to be too high because you'll start to rotate yourself out of this pose and you'll bring your hips a little bit more out of alignment. So the best bet in this pose is to tuck that knee under, or tuck your toes under, sorry. Continuing to breathe, feeling this nice stretch along the left-hand side of your body. Take a deep inhale. If you are down in folded over pigeon, start to walk yourself back up into proud pigeon, and let's come out of this pose. Plant those palms into the ground. Make sure your right foot is tucked nice and firmly with the toes under. Press those palms in, press those toes in. Let's take that left leg and let's rotate it at the hip, bringing energy and movement back into your hip. Let's walk the dog again. Really getting that energy back into the backs of your legs lengthening those muscles, stretching out those muscles. Okay, come back into a static downward dog. Take your right leg and bring it forward up in between your hands and then lower your knee. Once again, you can keep those toes tucked under that's going to support your knee and it might actually be more comfortable in this position. But we're gonna go into dragon pose. Bring your right hand around to the inside of your leg. Walk your foot to the outside of the mat a little bit so that your knee is touching your shoulder. I'm going to rotate so that you can see it from that side. So stay where you are. So you've got left hand, right hand, right foot. So this is dragon pose. You can stay here if you feel comfortable. If, if your hips are tight, this might be a good spot for you to stop. If you've got flexible hips and if you feel good, bend your left elbow, rest on your forearm. See how this feels. If you like it, you can bend that right elbow and rest on your right forearm. If you don't love it, if your hips are really tight, you can come back up onto the palms of your hands or do any combination of one bent elbow, one hand on the mat. Continuing to breathe, nice deep inhale, nice full exhale. Dragon pose is a really big hip opener. I like to teach this one for runners. It's a great way to build flexibility and strength in your hips. Okay, wherever you are, walk yourself back up onto your hands, bring your right hand to the outside of your right foot. Walk those toes back once, to, once again to the center. Deep inhale, let's step that foot to the back of the mat. Come into downward facing dog, stay where you are. I'm gonna rotate once again. Let's walk that dog. Let's come back to a static downward facing dog. Let's do the same with the left foot. Let's bring that left foot up and in between your hands. Lower that back knee. Now a really big challenging pose, if you're up for the challenge, it requires a lot of balance and a lot of hip flexibility is to do the pose with your knee up, but I've never done it that way. I, I, my hips are, I need to put enough focus on my hips rather than my balance. So I suggest keeping that knee down, but if you're up for the challenge, go right ahead. You can bring that left hand to the inside of your foot, walk that foot a little bit further to the outside, make sure that knee is touching your left shoulder and come into dragon. Staying here if you feel comfortable or coming down onto your forearm. Now you might find that you can come a little bit deeper on one side than the other and that's perfectly fine. That's the way that your body is holding stress. Um, when, you're, when one side of the body is more stressed, it's not as flexible and that's perfectly fine. So just cater to whatever you feel on that side of the body. Continuing to breathe, nice deep inhale, nice full exhale. 
And wherever you are, walk yourself back up onto the palms of your hands. Bring your left hand to the outside of your foot. Walk that foot back into the center. Step your left foot to the back of the mat. Let's walk the dog again. I love walking the dog. I will incorporate this as much as possible into my routine because it really stretches out those muscles behind your legs. Okay, deep inhale. As you exhale, let's come down onto all fours into tabletop once again. And then let's swing those legs around. Let's come into a seated position, bringing the soles of your feet together, coming into butterfly. So as we sit in butterfly, you can interlace your fingers and cup your toes. If this hurts your hips because your feet are too close to your body, just extend your feet a little bit further away and then place the palms of your hands anywhere along your shins, your ankles, or your knees. Just as long as you can sit up nice and tall in this pose. If your feet are further away, don't worry about reaching for your toes because you're gonna sink over a little bit. We wanna sit up nice and tall in butterfly. So let's sit up tall, feel this opening in your hips, nice flexibility in your hips, this helps to release tension in your lower back. Nice deep inhale. And as you exhale, open your eyes if they're closed. Let's inhale, look straight up to the sky. Exhale, bend your elbows, bring your chest down towards your toes. Inhale, coming back up, looking straight up to the sky. Exhale, bend your elbows, bring your chest down toward your toes. Inhale, coming back up looking straight up to the sky. Exhale, bend your elbows, bring your chest down toward your toes. One more time. Inhale, looking straight up to the sky. Exhale, bend your elbows, bring your chest down toward your toes. And inhale, coming back up to seated. Okay, keep your right leg where it is. Let's rotate that left leg at the hip. Bring the sole of your foot to the top of your left thigh. Rotate your torso so that you're looking over the inside of your right thigh. Plant your left hand into the mat in front of your shin, your right hand above your thigh, shoulders back and down, sitting up nice and tall. So right here, this is very similar to Proud Pigeon, which is what we just did with one leg here and then the other leg extended straight back. This is a modified version of Pigeon. If Pigeon is too much for you, this is another alternative. So because we're working on our sciatic nerve, we're gonna sit up a little bit taller in this position. Take a deep inhale, and then as you exhale, just walk your hands forward slightly to right around your knees, shoulders back and down, and feel this stretch. So this is zigzag legs. I teach this a lot. You'll see this in a lot of my videos. And I talk about folding over your leg. But when we're this high in this pose, this starts to focus on your sciatic nerve. And since that's what we're focusing on today, we wanna to stay as high as we can to stretch out that nerve. So you might be able to feel this in your left glute, sorry, in your right glute, the one, that's, the one that's on the ground, you can probably start to feel this. This is really helping to stretch that out. You can probably feel this on the opposite side of your back. So you can probably feel this on the lower left part of your back as well. Continuing to breathe, taking nice deep inhales and nice full exhales. On your next inhalation, walk yourself back up, rotate your torso to face me, stay in this zigzag position, take your right hand, Place your right hand on the outside of your left thigh. Left hand goes just behind your back as we come into a zigzag twist. So I love incorporating twisting poses. Twists really help to increase blood flow to your spine. When you increase blood flow to an area, I always like to say wherever blood flows, healing goes. So you're increasing healing. If you have a tight lower back or even lower back pain, this is a wonderful pose for you to do. It's a mild twist. And you can take this as deep as you like, as long as it's comfortable. You can get a little bit deeper into this by touching the outside of your shin. But for this purpose, we're just gonna go into a mild twist with your hand on the outside of your thigh. Take a deep inhale. And as you exhale, rotate to face me. Let's come back into butterfly pose. Let's bring that left leg around, sole of your feet together, and let's go into a butterfly forward bend. Take a deep inhale, looking straight up to the sky, exhale. Bend your elbows, bring your chest down towards your toes and let yourself relax in this forward bend. You can make any small adjustments that you might need to. Now you can rest your hands on your feet or still cupping your feet or extend them straight out in front of you. If you extend them straight out, you might be able to feel this in your lower back. You might be able to feel this into your sciatic nerve as well. This is a wonderful stretch for your hips. It's a great way to help lengthen the muscles behind your spine, in your spine and on your back. 
nice deep inhale. Let's walk ourselves back up into a seated position. Let's do zigzag on the opposite side. So let's take that right leg, rotate it at the hip. Sole of your uh, right, the sole of your left foot to the top of your right thigh. Rotate your torso so that you're looking over the inside of your left thigh. Right hand in the ground below your shin, left hand above your thigh. Shoulder back and down, sitting up nice and tall, starting to feel this already into your sciatic nerve. Deep inhale and then exhale. Start to walk yourself forward, bring those hands to right around your knee and just lean into this zigzag leg. Continuing to breathe, nice deep inhale, nice full exhale, feeling this nice stretch in the sciatic nerve, stretch on the left hand side of your glutes, in the lower right part of your back, continuing to breathe. Take a deep inhale, let's walk ourselves back up into a seated position, keep your legs nice and zigzag, rotate your torso so that you face me. Left hand goes on the outside of your right shin, right hand to the small of your back, just off to the side of your hip, and then glance toward the right hand side of your body. Coming into this nice zigzag twist, a little bit of blood flow to your spine, adds a little bit of flexibility to your spine, continuing to breathe, nice deep inhale and as you exhale let's rotate and face me once again now let's bring your feet out in front of you bent knees now you're going to need to reposition your feet as you need to so you're going to get into this pose and realize what feels comfortable for you this is called figure four pose so let's start with your right foot lift your right foot up off the mat rotate it at the hip place the bony part above your knee or above your ankle just above your knee place your hands right next to your hips, maybe a little bit behind them so you can lean back a little bit, fingertips facing forward. Now reposition that foot as you need to, feel this nice stretch in your hips. You can probably feel this into your sciatic nerve as well. Make sure your shoulders are back and down. So this is gonna bring your chest out slightly. Don't do this, don't sink into your shoulders, don't bring your shoulders up to your ears. Sit up nice and tall. This is going to help elongate your spine. It's going to help open up your back as well. Okay, we're gonna get a little bit deeper into this pose. Take a deep inhale, and as you exhale, start to shift your knee to the right-hand side. Now, I don't know if you can see, but I'm just kind of rolling onto the inside of my ankle so that I've got a straight line from my knee all the way down to the end of my foot. I'm not trying to keep my foot flat on the mat and rotating because then I'm getting into my lower back and it actually kind of hurts a little bit. So you just roll that ankle slightly, continuing to lean back, making sure the bony part above your ankle is resting on your knee, feeling this nice stretch into your sciatic nerve. So you should be able to feel this on the left-hand side of your body into your glutes, continuing to breathe, nice deep inhale, full exhale. On your next inhalation, let's bring that knee back up to center, uncross your right leg, put the sole of your right foot down on the mat. Let's do the same on the opposite side. Lift that left leg, rotate it at the hip, and just let yourself relax in this pose. Make sure that bony part above your ankle is resting above your knee. Now on this side, I can really feel this into my lower back without even having to do that twist. I can start to feel this already. Continuing to breathe, nice deep inhale. And then as you exhale, start to shift that knee to the left-hand side. Trying to keep your torso forward. We don't wanna, we don't wanna shift with our knees. We don't wanna rotate off to the side. Try to keep that torso forward and just let your knees fall. So you're kind of pivoting at the hips. You can see the outside of your right thigh if you look straight down. Continuing to breathe. Your knee does not need to touch the mat. You don't. You can see mine is not. You don't need to have total flexibility so that knee touches the mat. If it does, you kind of bring the rest of your body off and you're, you're not really getting into the body parts that you need to. So just let that knee fall as it feels comfortable, making sure that torso is still facing forward. Taking a nice deep inhale, let's bring that knee back up to center. Uncross your legs, sit up a little bit taller. Let's bring those knees a little bit further apart. Your feet are a little bit wider than hip width apart. We're gonna go into a movement called tarantula pose. Great way to stretch out your lower back. Bring your hands to the insides of your legs. Make little L's with your hands and rest those L's right behind your ankles. You can rest your heels in those little divots between your thumb and your forefinger. Now, if this feels good, you can stay here. If you want to get into your back a little bit more, bring those hands around to the front. 
This will help you sink a little bit deeper into this pose. This will help to stretch out your lower back a little bit more. Again, I call this tarantula pose. It's a great pose to do after a run as well. Great way to take any tension or stress off of your lower back. This is a great pose for if you're seated all day because of that reason. It's taking that pressure off of your back. Continuing to breathe, taking a nice deep inhale. As you exhale, let's bring those hands around to the center and then walk them forward and let yourself sink a little bit deeper into this pose. You can let your head fall down. You don't want it to go all the way down because you'll start to pull on your lower back. Just kind of look at your fingertips as you're in this variation. Continuing to breathe, nice deep inhales, nice full exhales. This is a wonderful pose that you can sit in anytime. So if you have been at a desk all day and you come up and you just need to do a stretch, you can come right into this pose and just sit in this pose for a while. Maybe you can eat your dinner this way. <laughs> but this is a great way to stretch out your back nice and comfortably. Nice deep inhales and full exhales. Let's walk ourselves back up into a seated position and extend both legs straight out onto the mat. We're gonna go into a little bit of a, full, a forward fold and a twisting pose together. So bring your fingertips out to the side of the mat. Take a deep inhale, sweep your arms all the way up. Exhale, open your arms and swan dive down, bringing your hands to your knees, your shins, your ankles, or the bottom of your feet. Make sure your shoulders are down and away from your ears. Don't force this pose. You don't actually need to touch the bottom of your feet if you can't. We don't wanna force it. We don't wanna to try to hurt our body. Make sure those shoulders are down and away. If you're reaching too hard because you can't touch, you're gonna to find that your shoulders are coming up to your ears and that's gonna put some strain on your lower back and that's what we're trying to avoid. So sitting comfortably in this pose, you should feel a little bit of a lengthening in your spine. If for any reason this hurts your back, just lift your head slightly and look at the tips of your toes. Continuing to breathe and then take a deep inhale, slowly coming up into a seated position. So we're gonna go into a deeper twist here. So let's bend your knee, bring the sole of your foot to the inside of your thigh. Let's bring that knee, let's bring your right foot to the outside of your left leg. Take your left hand, place your left hand on the mat next to your left hip. Start to rock a little bit off to the side, bend that left leg and bring the sole of your foot so that your so that like the back of your heel is right underneath your right glute. So you're sitting up nice and tall. We're gonna go into a variation of this twist called Half Lord of the Fish Pose. Inhale, extend your left arm all the way out to the side. Exhale, let's bring that arm in. Wrap the inside of your elbow around your knee. Right hand goes just behind the small of your back and feel this. You can feel this in that sciatic nerve running down your right glute right now. You can really feel this nice stretch. This is a very, very deep stretch. If you don't love this pose, if this is painful for you, if you love this, stay here. I'm gonna show another variation. If this is too painful for you, you can come out of this pose and just extend that leg forward and come into a regular twist. You're not going to get into your glutes as much, but you'll still feel a little bit of the benefit. I'm gonna go back into Half Lord of the Fish. Now, for either variation, if you feel comfortable, you can bring your left arm around so that your tricep is resting on the top of your thigh just above your knee, fingertips pointed straight up to the sky. Now don't try to force yourself into a deeper twist. You're just gonna let yourself fall naturally into whatever twist you're able to go into. So by coming, by bringing that arm in, you, you kind of force your, your body into a deeper twist, but you don't wanna really put a lot of energy in. We're not, we're not trying to give ourselves a, a chiropractic adjustment. You don't wanna to exert too much energy trying to push yourself because you could injure yourself. So you just let your body fall naturally into whatever twist this brings you to. Continuing to breathe, nice deep inhale. As you exhale, let's release that arm, turning and rotating forward. Left hand goes off to the side, rolling yourself off to the side, extending that left foot forward. Bring that right foot back to the inside, extend it straight down on the mat. Let's do the same on the opposite side. Let's bend your left knee sole of your left foot comes to the inside of your thigh let's bring that foot to the outside right hand goes down onto the mat next to you rolling off slightly bending that right knee the heel of your foot goes just underneath your glute deep inhale extend that right arm all the way out to the side exhale bring that arm in wrap the inside of your elbow around your knee left hand goes just behind your back feeling this in your left glute if you feel comfortable let's bring that arm in 
let your tricep rest above your knee. So when you go into this pose, if you do this alone, I don't suggest coming right from here and going right into this. Do a little bit of a stop. Let your elbow rest on your knee first, wrap it around your knee so that you've got a stopping point and you're not propelling yourself into a deep twist. This just becomes a natural transition if you go right from the elbow around the knee into this deeper twist. You reduce the risk for injury. Continue to breathe as you look off to the left hand side of your body. Nice deep inhales, nice full exhales. Take a deep inhale and as you exhale, rotate forward once again, roll off to the side, extend that left leg straight, or right leg straight down. Now extend your left leg straight down. Let's go into that forward bend once again. Fingertips out to the side, deep inhale, sweep those arms all the way up. Exhale, open your arms and swan dive down. So this helps you length, to lengthen those muscles behind your legs a little bit more. Um, that half lord of the fish gets a little bit deeper into that muscle extension, which is really good because you're able to get a little bit more benefit out of those muscles. So you might find that you're able to get even deeper into this forward bend than you would with a normal seated twist pose. Continuing to breathe, nice deep inhales, nice full exhales. On your next inhalation, come up into a seated pose. Keep your legs extended straight out in front of you. We're gonna go into a movement called cradle pose. Let's bend your right knee, sole of your foot on the mat, and then rotate. Rest the bony part above your heel, above your knee. Now, I've got two options for you. So if you can reach, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your right arm, bring that arm around, rest your elbow above your knee, and then place the palm of your hand on the outside of your calf. Bring that left arm down and around to the bottom and rest your foot on the inside of your elbow and that left hand can kind of cradle your right hand. It's gonna wrap over your right hand. If for some reason you can't get fully into this position, another safe variation, you'll take your right hand and place your right hand underneath your knee to support it and your left hand comes down and supports your ankle. So you're gonna kind of take your foot off of your knee slightly. So whatever variation feels comfortable for you, I'm gonna show the full variation on this first one. On your next inhalation, come up into a seated pose. And this is cradle pose. So this is really, you can probably feel this into your glute. This is a great stretch for your glutes. This is another great pose for runners. Um, this is another way to help elongate those muscles behind your legs. Keep those hips nice and flexible. It also helps to strengthen the lower part of your back because you're using your sits bones to sit up nice and tall. I don't think it's easy to slouch in this pose. I think by nature, you will naturally sit up nice and tall. So just to show you what it looks like if you can't reach, this is what it will look like by cradling and cupping your knee and your ankle. So it can still be done very easily. It's called cradle pose because it's like we're cradling a baby. <laughs> nice deep inhale and then exhale. Fold forward, release your hands, Let's bring the sole of your foot to the inside of your leg and extend that leg straight out. You can rock those feet out a little bit, rock those knees, and let's do the same on the other side. Let's bend that left knee, sole of your foot to the inside of your thigh, and then rotate it. Let's bring that right arm down and around at the bottom, left hand down and around at the top. Sorry, I did that reverse. So make sure your left hand is underneath your right hand or you are grasping your knee and your ankle for support. Nice deep inhale, oh, sorry. Exhale, and now on your next inhalation, let's come up into a seated pose. Bringing that knee up, and you might find that you've got a little bit more flexibility on one side than the other. On this side, it's a little bit easier for me to get up into this pose than on the other. I've got a little bit more flexibility, and I can sit a little bit taller. Continuing to breathe, feeling this in your lower back, feeling this into your glutes. Nice deep inhale. This also helps to stretch out your hamstrings. Nice deep inhale, full exhale. On your next exhalation, let's fold forward, release your leg, release your foot. Let's bring the sole of your foot to the inside of your thigh and then extend it out. Let's rock out those knees. And now we're gonna come down into a reclined position. So place the soles of your feet on the mat, hands on either side of your legs and then roll yourself all the way back. Keeping those knees bent, Bring your feet a little bit closer to your body. We're gonna go into what I call thread the needle pose. So we're gonna start with your right leg. Lift your, yeah, lift your right leg up, rotate it at the hip. The bony part above your knee rests above, or the bony part above your ankle rests above your knee. Take your right hand 
and look straight down. There's a triangle that you've created in your legs by bending that left leg, place your hand in between that triangle. Left hand comes to the outside of your left leg, lift that left leg up and interlace your fingers either below your knee or behind your thigh. So there are a few variations of this pose. However, when it comes to your sciatic nerve, I find that this variation is the best. Extending that leg up takes a little bit of the, the extension off of your sciatic nerve, so I like to keep that knee bent when you're focusing on that. This helps to release pressure in your lower back. You can probably feel some of that pressure release right now. This releases pressure in your sciatic nerve into your glutes. Now with your right foot, you'll see mine is engaged. It's just natural for me to do that. You can flex your foot, you can point your toes, you can rotate it at the ankle to get some movement into your foot, or you can just be lazy and let it hang. Whatever feels most comfortable and most natural for you. Continuing to breathe. Nice deep inhales. Nice full exhales. We'll take one more deep inhale, really feeling this on your back, on your hips, on your sciatic nerve. And as you exhale, release your fingertips, bring your left foot down to the mat, uncross your, left, your right foot, bring your right foot down to the mat. Make any small adjustments that you need to. And then let's move to the opposite side. Let's bend that right leg, so the ankle rests just above your knee. Left hand goes into the triangle that we've created between our legs, right hand to the outside. Let's lift that right foot up and in Interlace your fingers either below your knees or behind your thighs, whatever feels most comfortable for you. And let's stay in this variation. Once again, with your foot, you can either point, flex, rotate at the ankles, or be lazy, whatever feels most comfortable for you. Continuing to breathe and noticing how it feels on this side. So if your sciatic nerve is flared up, it's likely on one side of your body. So you'll feel that on one side and then you'll feel something totally different on the opposite side. So on this side, I personally can feel this on the inside of my hips and then into my glutes a little bit more than I did on the other side. On the other side, I actually felt it in the lower part of my back the most. Continuing to breathe, nice deep inhales and nice full exhales. Staying in this pose, if you do this on your own, you can stay in this pose for as long as you feel comfortable. If it feels really good, you can stay in this for quite some time. Okay, take a deep inhale. As you exhale, release those fingertips, bring the sole of your foot down on the mat, uncross your legs, bring the sole of your left foot down onto the mat. Bring your feet a little bit closer to your body, bring your feet about hip width apart as we move into our final pose. This is called mountain raises from the sea. This is a great strengthener for your back. I mentioned earlier, that one of the best ways to combat sciatica is to strengthen your back, have a nice strong back and strong core. So this is a great pose that's going to help strengthen those two areas for you. So take a deep inhale. As you exhale, press your heels into the mat, lift your hips up towards the sky, really trying to squeeze your bum when you get to the top of this pose, and then inhale, lower back down. Very important, make sure you're looking up towards the sky in this pose. We wanna keep that weight evenly distributed on your neck. Exhale, press your heels into the mat, lift your hips up towards the sky, squeeze your bum when you get to the top of this pose, and inhale, lower back down. Exhale, press those heels in the mat, lift your hips up to the sky, squeezing your bum, and inhale, lower back down. Okay, continue to do this as you move at a comfortable pace. Don't move too quickly. Move nice and slowly. That's gonna help build up that strength for you. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about this pose. So when you start to lift those hips up, you can start to feel this in your calf muscles. You can feel this in your quads, which are the muscles in the fronts of your thighs. I have you squeeze your bum at the top because it helps to strengthen your glutes and it also helps to strengthen your lower back. When you squeeze your bum, it engages your lower back and it also engages your core. A strong core helps to protect your lower back. So we wanna engage our core, we wanna strengthen it, we want to engage our lower back too. Continuing to breathe, exhaling up and inhaling down. So another great benefit of this pose is that it, when your body weight comes up, all of it rests on your shoulders. So you're getting a little bit of a shoulder strengthener in this as well. We're going to do this one more time. 
exhaling as you lift your hips up off the mat, squeezing your bum, and then inhale, lower back down. Okay, now let's go to the most important part of any day, a full body stretch. Extend your legs straight out in front of you. Extend your arms straight up above your head. Nice deep inhale and then exhale. Bring those arms down to your sides. And then let's come up into a seated position. So I hope all of those poses really help to ease any symptoms of sciatica that you might have. Every single one of those poses works wonderfully. You can continue to do them all together or you can do them individually. Find the ones that work the best for you and continue to do them regularly. This will not cure your sciatica, but it will absolutely help you to feel just a little bit better. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again and namaste.